Okay, thank you. Good morning, uh, uh, Mr. Matonzi. Good morning, Mr. Salmon. Uh, Recording in progress. Good morning, honorable members. We are today going to, and other stakeholders who are in the meeting, our officials, um, we're going to deal with two issues. Uh, one is the report that we've already received by, presented by the Home Affairs um, IEC and Government Printing Works. We've deliberated on the, on the issues as we prepare for PRRR. And the expectation is that uh, we ought to resolve on uh, or adopt the report that's going to be presented. Highlight some of the key issues that uh, you members have already deliberated um, and guided both the Home Affairs and the uh, IEC. And thirdly, giving impression in terms of the key recommendation on the government uh, printing works. Other issues relate to the audit outcome presented by the Auditor General in terms of the progress on these portfolios and the weaknesses identified that affirm their state of governance, service delivery, and the financial position. We'll also interface with the report or the request for input uh, to the job profile of the commissioners um, in relation to the electoral uh, election agency uh, or commission. Uh, IEC uh, members will make input. We have postponed last week's meeting and agreed in principle that will then allow the team to finalize the report, send to members, members will uh, deliberate, sorry, members will input, look at the report and make some of the inputs that uh, ought to be uh, captured in the report. Then we'll uh, then move to adopt this report. So. That is a framework of our portfolio committee meeting today. Is there any other matter, uh, Mr. Matonzi, uh, around this report? Uh, or let me allow you to start present the apologies. Then I'll invite you and Mr. Salmon before members uh, could further guide uh, uh, noting that we agreed on the process that. Is there any apologies, Mr. Matun? Yes, Chairperson. There is an apology from Ms. Mulekwa and Ms. Tito, who are saying they are on their way to coming down to Cape Town. Ms. Lukwa says she's in the meeting at the moment, but she indicated that her participation might be limited because she's also driving from, from Northwest to, to Johannesburg. But she's in the meeting at the moment. Thanks, Chair. That's all from my side. Okay, noted. Members, any other, any other apology? Okay, you, you can take us through uh, uh, on the first item, uh, Mr. Salmon. Thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> Eddie, we, we're going to start with the, the BRRR, yes, according to the yes, agenda. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning, honorable members. Um, I received feedback from two, two members, um, from Honorable Roos and Honorable Fandamava, um, and I've indicated them here in color. So uh, what I'll do is, um, members are familiar with these BRRR reports. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire 50-page document. In in essentially, you'll remember it's a, a summary of all the work that we've been doing with the, the mission and uh, the department and the printing works uh, throughout the year, their, their budgets, their annual plans, our oversight, um, feedback from the ministers, all our meetings, and also now recently the annual reports. So we, I've attempted to capture all of these um, in, the, in the report. And uh, essentially what we kind of, bring it down to is these recommendations towards the end here. Um, so the first in section six, which is on page uh, 48, is the outstanding recommendation from previous years. So these are recommendations we made that the, the department or the entity still haven't fulfilled. Uh, so the first of which for the Department of Home Affairs is striving towards a clean audit opinion. 
and, and better adhere to India audit plans. Um, in particular, the impairment of departmental revenue in collecting of penalties, issues of significant, significant contingent liabilities and the reduction of irregular expenditure. And the progress on the audit plans and the Auditor General Management Letter must continue to form part of all future quarterly performance reporting to the committee. So we haven't uh, received, um, there's obviously progress that's being made, but uh, we haven't reached the clean audit yet. And there is also still um, the Auditor Management, General Management Letter that uh, we haven't been briefed on. Um, secondly, the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure should ensure that all officials and others who are found to have acted in, in, in the illegal procurement process of the Bait Bridge fence are held accountable. This investigation is still uh, out, outstanding and we haven't found, haven't had a report on it yet. Um, thirdly, the committee welcomed the dual connectivity links at several offices and the installation of power generators at 196 offices, but urged the DHA to increase this number. And the department has also report uh, in partnership with CETA to resolve the network connectivity within 24 months, as specified in the 2019 annual performance plan. And as members are well aware, the, the, these uh, connectivity issues are still uh, an ongoing challenge. Um, and the fourth one here is added uh, by Honorable Ruiz, um, which were that were outstanding from previous years, which I, I didn't include. Um, the first of which was the, the assess and report to the committee within three months on the cost and benefit of having security cameras, security services, and cash collection for staff and clients at vulnerable DHA offices. So. Now, on this point, and also the 6.1.5, the minister did provide a written uh, response on these two issues, which I'll briefly, I'll briefly um, show to members, and then you can decide whether we still want to include these, these uh, recommendations. So firstly, for the issue of uh, having security cameras installed on page 42, uh, the minister indicates that um, on the page on the top of page forty two uh, uh, on the bottom of page forty two that uh, there's a criminal assets recovery account funding that's being sourced for the installation of security cameras as there is currently no budget for this exercise and that private security will be decentralized to the nine provinces uh, effective 1st April. And, and this will ensure better management of the service level agreements by the provinces. And a decision has been taken to replace night guards with alarm systems, inclusive of our, our armed response. And then uh, cash in transit is allocated a 6 million rand budget, which will decent be decentralized to offices uh, effective April 1st, 22. And uh, the department is considering uh, 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 encouraging officers to go cashless in order to do away with uh, minimize uh, cash and transit uh, issues. And, and that the department has a service to provide uh, on contract that provides cash in transit. In order to reduce the cost in transit uh, cost, the department was moving towards cashless as indicated. And, but the department can't afford to increase the number of private security officers deployed at its offices. Um, and that they are considering a cost benefit analysis uh, to which we submitted to the department in the in the uh, current financial year, which they still haven't done yet, but uh, which we um, which we can still follow up on. So anyway, that's just on the one point that I raised by Honorable, Honorable Ruiz. So we, I didn't include uh, some of the recommendations because there was a response by the department, even though we uh, didn't necessarily get a briefing for them. Um, then secondly, on the 6.1.5, uh, the upgrading of key ports of entry uh, should have prior, prior, prioritized timeframes and progress uh, be reported to the committee by the end of July, uh, June, 2022. So on this one, uh, the department responded on the top of page 45, um, which is here, yeah, um, that the presidential infrastructure project has enlisted this project as a priority project and a request for proposals has been issued 
And in this regard, the final draft uh, request for proposal has been finalized. However, uh, three key issues remain, um, require finalization and the legal mandate of the DHA BMH to uh, procure the project, the, the user free fee collection mechanism and the land availability for the project. And that the, the DAJ is addressing these issues with the, the support of the relevant stakeholders. So those are the responses to those two uh, issues um, that we have received. Um, that's just indicated here, see uh, where, where to reference them. Um, just to indicate though, however, that this response was received from, from the Minister of Home Affairs in February uh, already this year. So it was within the six months um, required that we specified for response on a lot of these issues. Um, and then 6.1.6, .6, um, revise the need for working and providing services to clients on Saturdays in negotiation with National Treasury for funding and trade unions for staff interests prior to the, uh, prior to the end of the 2019 financial year. So we've, we've received uh, informal feedback on this, but um, this, this issue does remain as a outstanding uh, uh, issue of consideration. Uh, so that one again, also added by Honorable Ruiz there. And then moving on to the government printing works, their outstanding uh, recommendations were that the GPW should report on the implications of introducing legislative provisions for ring fencing of certain government printing works uh, prior to tabling of such legislation at uh, parliament. And secondly, ensure that the state printers bill is submitted to parliament by the end of the 2019 financial year, that bill is still outstanding. The committee notes that a police investigation is underway regarding the CVs of advertised posts. However, the minister should hold the acting CEO or uh, now the now the current CEO for uh, accountable for missing CVs. The committee expect a report from the acting CEO on, on the actions taken against those responsible for the safeguarding of the CVs. So there was a, a ministerial advisory committee. Uh, established on, on this matter, um, but we haven't received the specifics of this uh, particular matter yet because it's still under investigation. Uh, the GPW should attempt to table their 2021 annual report um, before May 2022 uh, and report on those being held responsible for the loss of financial data without the relevant backups being in place. Uh, so obviously this their annual report is still outstanding. Uh, regarding uh, human resources in the IT environment, the committee urged GPW to develop a strategy to augment skills and capacity to, to ensure sustainability in the long run. So they have indicated to us recently that they are appointing some uh, IT staff, uh, but they have, haven't nearly got enough of what they need yet. Um, There's also the, the question of outsourced uh, um, IT capacity, which uh, is, we will still need uh, further reporting on. Um, the outstanding matters for the Electoral Commission are providing detailed motivation and budgets for the procurement of permanent headquarters, rather than the continued payment of considerable rent prior to the end of the current lease agreement. Um, secondly, the IEC, in collaboration with the key stakeholders, will need to further improve to ensure that the 10 million unregistered eligible South Africans are on the voters' roll and participate in elections during the upcoming national and provincial elections schedule for 2024. This is a recommendation also reiterated in the current, uh, current year by members. We then move to the budget review and recommendations uh, for the current financial year. And um, rather than indicate uh, timeframes for each of the specific um, recommendations, I've indicated here that they should just report back in general within six months, which is uh, where the report I just referred to earlier um, arose. Um, there were various timelines, um, but we've given six months uh, in general to respond to these issues so that we have them in, in writing. And then we can also perhaps have a meeting on this report once, once it's tabled to keep abreast of these recommendations. Um, so the recommendations for this year for the DHA is that they should ensure that registration of birth is improved to be within the confines of the legislation and to not delay the issuance of an birth certificates. 
Secondly, the DHA should modernize the remaining 214 offices to ensure that citizens can apply for smart cards and there should be a state where the issuance of greed ID books should be stopped, uh, including for naturalized citizens because this is vulnerable to fraudulent activities. The, the point there of including for naturalized citizens uh, was added by Honorable Rus uh, because um, at this stage, these naturalized citizens aren't yet receiving smart ID cards. So if they're gonna phase out the, uh, the green ID books, then they need to ensure that these uh, naturalized citizens also receive the, uh, the smart cards first. Um, three there, the Department of Home Affairs should roll out uh, branch appointment booking systems to all offices. Um, 6.2.4 and 2.5 and 2.6 were, um, uh, was, yeah, were all one, were one recommendation. We've separated them out into three, again, on, on the recommendation of, of Honorable Ruiz. <clears throat> um, and the second, so then 6.2.4 is the application of passports and identity documents to the banks should also be rolled out further to alleviate the long queues at the DHA. And that's now separated from the mobile units should also be dedicated to schools and the elderly. And in the addition uh, by Honorable Ruiz that an annual and biannual schedule of mobile units visits to schools should be drawn up in advance and children at the schools who are unable to apply for the birth certificates of IDs on the day of the mobile unit visit should be referred by DHA to their nearest Home Affairs office. The Home Affairs office must work with the Department of Basic Education and Department of Social Development to proactively assist these children with social support and or assist indigent fathers with free DNA testing, should this be preventing the child from registering their birth. Um, then 16.2.6, uh, the DHA should ensure that it reduces irregular expenditure and complies with the related legislation when executing its mandate. Uh, point seven, ensure that the DHA continues to develop their audit action plans to address the negative findings identified by the, by the AG. Uh, point eight, the DHA must improve the eHome Affairs system and contact center response times. Nine, the Department of Home Affairs should ensure that hiring of the 10,000 youth to work on the scanning project is completed without necessary delay and report to the committee within three months uh, on progress on this report. And this was actually raised by Honorable Ruiz. I just forgot to add it in red. Uh, point 10, the DHA should address its ongoing IT challenges, system downtimes, long queues, and lengthy waiting times at its offices. So this, this one, uh, these finally, these following ones in green are raised by um, Honorable van der Merwe. Um, this first one um, is actually covered by some of the recommendations outstanding from the previous year, as long as the, as well as the, um, the appointment system and the, the call center uh, issues raised above, but it's a, a kind of overarching recommendation. Um, and then point 11, the minister should ensure that the findings of the ministerial tasking about the validity of, uh, validity of permits are developed into a remedial action plan. Point 12, the department must take action plan must table an action plan to address the country's immediate immigration challenges, including the prevalence of fake IDs, passports, and undocumented migrants, while ensuring that the BMA to beca becomes fully operational without further delay. 13, the DHA should update its policies or develop a new policy that will ensure that it collects fines from transport operators that breach immigration laws. So this one's speaking directly to uh, some of the outstanding audit findings. 14, the DHH should ensure that it intensifies its fight against fraud and corruption within the department and that officials are referred for sanction and prosecution. Uh, then the government printing work recommendations for uh, 2022. Uh, point 15, DPW should work closely with National Treasury, the DHA, CETA and the AG to ensure that the Annual performance, annual report and financial statements for the 2021-22 financial year are submitted to the Auditor General and Parliament as soon as possible and to ensure that the 2022-23 financials are submitted on time. 16. 
the Minister of Home Affairs should ensure that all the recommendations of the Ministerial Review Panel on the data loss at GBW are implemented, particularly the consequence management, upgrade and maintenance of IT infrastructure and multiple redundancy backups. Uh, 6.2.1.7 was um, on the state printer's bill. And the recommendation I put was that uh, that the bill should consider compelling government departments and entities to print for uh, print security and non-security documents with the GPW. Uh, Honorable Ruiz indicated that this should rather be removed um, until such time as the GPW can prove their governance is in order and stable and uh, that the minister must ensure that the investigations uh, uh, indicate the, whether there was sabotage um, and rather than uh, uh, these investigations have come out rather before the uh, compelling government departments to uh, print with the, with the GPW. Um, the statement then would which would be 6.2.1.7 instead by Fanonable uh, Fanamava is that the ministry to ensure that at a cabinet level an agreement is reached to ensure that GBW is is the preferred printing establishment for all government departments so we have there two countering recommendations the one suggesting that uh, we should wait before we compel uh, departments to print with the GPW until things are investigated or versus um, going to a cabinet level to ensure that it uh, that that government partners do so. Um, so we'll have to decide between those. Uh, 18, the Minister of Home Affairs and GPW should aggressively market GPW products to the African market and other parts of the world. And 19, the Minister of Home Affairs and GPW should complete reviewing all the evergreen contracts as a matter of urgency. Then uh, the recommendations for the IEC. Uh, oh, I just see that now that the numbering is wrong on this. Let me just make a note to fix that. Uh, the IC must expand its outreach and education to mobilize more young people to vote. The IC must report back within six months on addressing the remaining 66 million in uncondoned irregular expenditure. The IC must address, must report back, I'm sorry, the IC must address the technical and training issues with the new voter management device as well before the 24 national and provincial elections. The IC must address the issue of uh, some voters being removed from the voters' role without being informed. The I continued IIC or clean audit is commendable and focus should now be directed to improve performance against targets, which has remained at around 75% over the last two years. And the IIC, IIC should continue to collaborate with GPW to print as much of the ballots as possible in the upcoming national elections. So, Chairperson, this is what I have thus far. Um, I'll keep the document displayed so that members can refer to where they need to. Um, and I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Salma. Members, these are areas that we deliberated on. Um, and the report that was presented emanate for from those uh, uh, presentation made by Home Affairs, uh, IEC, uh, and Government uh, Printing Works. <clears throat> um, I'm sure uh, Mr. Salmon, uh, we we one of the areas we we need to also deal with is to take stock of the last budget vote presented by the minister and the commitment made for the financial year under review in terms of the implementation of uh, some of the uh, areas prioritized by the department uh, just to track to track uh, and get a sense uh, in line with the budget uh, allocation 
I'm going to invite members to interface with the report. You will deal with all the three areas, Home Affairs, IEC, and, uh, um, and Government Printing Works. Um, we, we may also look on where there are weaknesses which the committee has at all time made emphasis on. Uh, where there's no improvement, we might be able to identify that. Where there's a progress, we must also identify that so that we're able to talk to the report as presented and we're able to, when we reflect broadly, uh, we we'll take notes that the committee have contributed to some of the key issues that uh, we thought to, uh, to, to implement. Uh, I'll then invite the uh, Honorable Play, Honorable Ross, Honorable Lukwase, Honorable Kanyele, Honorable Lizel, Honorable Mukhale, Honorable Mudise. Uh, Mr. Matons, you'll, you'll, you'll inform me when other members have joined, noting their, their, their apologies of, on travel. In that order. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and good morning to all members. Chair, I'm going to start with the um, items that was raised by Honorable Ross in red. I think the first one around cameras, cash in transit, et cetera, um, has been covered. Um, Adam has taken us through the response by the minister. And I think that, um, I guess, 6.1.4 has already been covered in respect of the response by the minister, and I think there has been updates. There's even a clear plan of action in terms of, um, of this item. So I suggest that um, this recommendation may not be necessary in light of the um, um, submissions that we have. Uh, then on item 6.2.3, um, where it speaks of the branch uh, booking system, Chair, I want us to further recommend um, that the collections should be included. Remember, we have received a report from DHA saying that currently the branch appointment booking system is only for applications. So you make an appointment for applications, um, but they are still to tweak that system to include collections. And I think one of the biggest challenges that we find applicants complaining about after making that application is having to collect the IDs. Um, and some of them you know, are lying in offices for months on end. So I think it's important that we are able to, um, to deal with that. Then in respect of item 6.2.10, now I recall that there was a presentation that we received in respect of um, CETA and the networks. And I, and, and I stand to be corrected that it was in respect of decentralizing networks to the provinces so that when there is a network that's down, it won't affect the entire country like we do have currently. Um, and perhaps maybe a DG or minister may be able to, to just refresh our memory. But if that is the case, and I know that it was presented to us, Perhaps we can just um, add that um, line in terms of update or status update. But I think otherwise that, that item is covered. Um, and then Chair, on GPW, um, there's just one recommendation. Um, I think that as the committee, we have been receiving you know, presentations upon presentations. We've had discussions. But our challenge is that ultimately, as the committee who provides oversight, um, we can't have that audits are not complete. We can't have data being lost um, uh, continuously. Uh, we can't have that we are not able to, um, to justify um, the workings of a unit. And in respect of that, Chair, um, I would want to, well, we as the ANC would like to recommend that perhaps we need to refer uh, the matter of GPW to SCOPA. Um, I so present and submit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our contributions, Honorable Pillay, Honorable Ross. 
Thank you, Chair, and uh, thanks to Adam to putting this together and recovering it so quickly. Um, firstly, Chair, I'd like to agree with Honourable Pillay um, in terms of adding the appointment for collections. That's a, that's a great idea. Um, then just in terms of defending the issue of the security cameras, and I think we, we all went on the oversight um, and we saw a number of different issues. So the, the one issue was the unrest and what happened and the fact that there was no video recordings. And then the other one was things like theft, et cetera, inside um, the buildings. Um, and we'd all raised this as quite a serious issue. Um, so I, I do see that there was some writing about it. It seems vague to me. I don't know if everybody's satisfied with that um, because my expectation, certainly when we made that recommendation, is that we would receive a report to say, um, this is what we're going to do. This is where the budget's going to come from and we're going to do it. So from what I see there, I'm not 100% sure where that's going. But uh, the chairperson, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to also just track that uh, separately um, to make sure that that uh, that does come to the committee. But I think as a committee, we need to have an assurance that yes, it's going to happen or no, it's not going to happen. And this is what's going to happen and when. Uh, because we we all made that same observation that this is a big problem for home affairs, a big risk um, for the staff as well in those offices. So it, uh, to, to my mind, this needs to be a proper report that we actually um, interrogate as a, as a committee. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the ports of entry to take that out. Um, I see there's been some, some input on that, which is fine. Um, and then, yeah, I think, uh, again, I'd, I'd like to agree with Honorable Pillay in terms of GPW. Um, and I was also going to suggest, um, you know, aside from this, that uh, this matter be referred to SCOPA. I think we as a committee have tried and uh, we've, we've had several interventions, but I think it could be useful for um, a specialist committee to, to, to have a look at this and, and, and keep an eye on it. We have a number of issues to look at uh, as a committee. Um, and then finally, yeah, just to justify again, I think the, the 10,000 youth project, I think it's a very important project um, because what is happening in the background is a number of persons cannot get their older birth certificates because the birth record is in some archive somewhere and it, it cannot be found. Um, and so this is not only important for that point of view, um, but also for the, the, the creation of employment. I think it's critical at this point in time. Um, but the way our economy is going, that we we make sure that this youth um, employment creation project happens, and it happens as quickly as possible. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honourable Ross, for your contributions. Uh, I'm not sure, Honourable Pasta, whether she will be able to, on because it's, I'm told she's driving. Honourable Pasta. Honorable Kanyele. Thank you, Chaperson, and greetings to you and uh, all the colleagues and everyone on the platform. Chaperson, uh, firstly, I'd like to support the recommendation that was made by Honorable Pillay, that the issue of the loss of data by GPW and incomplete audits must be referred to SCOPA. If I remember very well, I think this issue was raised previously when we were receiving the report from GPW. But nonetheless, the recommendation that was put forward today, uh, I'm, I'm in full support of. And uh, secondly, Chaperson, I think I have been covered on the issue of the network that is always offline. I think when it comes to the issues of home affairs, this is the biggest issue or obstacle that we are faced with. Because if we don't get our network um, sorted out, no matter how many interventions we're going to come forth with, they're not going to resolve the issue of long queues at home affairs. People can, can go to the banks, people can apply online, but the network that always goes offline, it's the, the biggest challenge. And we're also getting a bigger number of emails where members of the community are explaining that at times when they're making their appointment, when they're about to finish, the system will just go offline and it does not allow them to restart the whole function again or the, the whole application. So this issue will, will need to be addressed. Um, there is an issue also to person that was raised a recommendation that the issue of home affairs should open on, on Saturdays. I think this, is, this will also be left with the negotiations with the unions. 
I don't know how we can find an, an expression on the recommendations that this can also, I think this can happen even without the negotiations with the unions. I am saying this because presently, home affairs offices, especially during school holidays, they are able to open up until six o'clock in the evening instead of closing at four. And if you calculate these hours from Monday to Friday, it is 10 hours. That is a day, a day extra. I'm really not sure what um, criteria do they use to be able to arrive at this decision because they can actually always close at, at four and then all the hours that they're working extra then be transferred to a Saturday to enable people that are working to also be able to, to, to make applications. There is a recommendation that talks about, I think 6.2.1 also, that talks about the issue of birth certificates. In the report, the department has demonstrated that they're able to reach their targets. But the biggest challenge there, it is the issue of unabridged birth certificates. I think it will be very important that we indicate that the department must ensure that the UPCs are printed out within eight weeks because that is the feedback that they give to, to applicants. If they want to extend that turnaround time, it's definitely up to them, but they must give us something that is realistic for us to be able to work on. And lastly, Chairperson, um, I don't know how we can be able to add this with the recommendations, the issue of emails and calls that goes unanswered. One of the reasons that we find ourselves working is, is an extended extension of range of home affairs. It is because the officials at home affairs do not respond to their emails. And when you get an email that comes from an applicant, it comes with an email trail that shows that they have been communicating with the office of home affairs, but they were not responding or their emails were being ignored. That is why now all these issues are coming to us. Maybe if we can find a way of, of adding that into the recommendation, I'll truly appreciate it. Maybe it can also assist us. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Good morning to all the colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm, I'm covered in terms of the submissions that I gave. Um, but I think under GPW, I will withdraw my recommendation um, if, if needs be um, and then support the committee in referring the matter to SCOPA. Um, I even think, you know, as much as SCOPA can look deeper into matters, you know, I, I even think that um, SCOPA might not go far enough. But I think once SCOPA has done its investigation, um, we can possibly as a committee see um, if there's a need to refer it to, to any other um, body or institution, uh, the matters of GPW. So I support that. And then I think on the issue um, that Honorable uh, Kanyele has just raised, the two issues of opening offices on Saturdays, as well as the unresponsiveness of officials. Um, I actually saw recently the, an, ad, an ad that was circulated amongst my constituency members, and it was that um, the Richards Bay office was open on a Saturday and it was um, obviously, so it means some offices are able to open on Saturdays. And so we should actually um, be looking, um, if, if that office could open on a Saturday, I'm sure there are other key offices that can also open on a Saturday. And also I think the issue of the unresponsiveness of, of officials, you know, it, for me, it, it is such a big concern. Um, I recently had a challenge, Shepers, and just to share amongst us of um, a young man that, um, renewed his passport in July and it's because he works abroad and he works abroad to be able to, to um, support his family. He had renewed it in July. He paid for it uh, twice um, because the IT systems on home affairs didn't reflect that he had paid. So he had paid twice. And after numerous emails from him and his family, eventually I had to intervene and even myself could not get responses from officials in terms of, of getting that passport printed. And that young man eventually um, lost his job while well, he, he's now been able to, to go and, and work again. But, you know, just the, the general, and, and, and I was speaking to a DG, I was speaking to, to, so the unresponsiveness of officials is for me a very big concern because um, really basic things that should be resolved 
are not resolved because officials do not respond to emails or do not attend to the work that they should be doing timelessly. So we should also be um, including a recommendation in that regard, because I think it goes to the very heart of a service delivery of this department. And we're not asking the officials for favors. We are simply asking them for, to do the, what they are supposed to be doing, what they're employed to do. So I support those two recommendations as well, plus the ones that I had submitted via writing. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Zell, for your contributions. Honorable Mohale. Honorable Mukhale, I'm not sure, maybe you... Okay, Honorable Mudisim, sir. Thank you very much, Chair. I think members have raised um, most of the issues. I think for me, Chair, is for us to also be able to track the progress on the number of offices that the department has been able to modernize uh, thus far and to, to track the plan that they might have for the next financial year with regard to the modernization of, uh, of the offices. I think the progress there is very slow, so we need to really get a proper briefing from the department uh, with regards to that. And also the increase in the procurement or the procuring, procuring uh, of mobile offices and, and the plan that the department might have in, with regard to its operations and the areas that these uh, mobile um, uh, offices are being uh, supplied to or, the, or, or areas where they, they largely are uh, operating it. Chair, lastly on the, on the IEC, um, we also need to, I remember in the previous uh, meetings would have recommended that they need to have a, a, a proper plan or a program with regard to the outreach program in ensuring that uh, uh, they, they extensively, extensively do their uh, uh, education to, to mobilize um, uh, people for, for votes uh, but particularly also focus on, on um, attracting young voters. So we also need to, 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 to track um, uh, the, the outreach program of, of IEC. Chair, I also want to fully, fully support the recommendation that has been made um, by Honorable Pillay with regard to, to um, uh, uh, GPW issues matters that they should be now taken to, to SCOPA. We cannot um, from time to time continuously get reports on data that has been lost. Uh, I saw an item also a, a line on CVs that has been lost. So clearly there's, a, there's, a, there's an issue or there's a serious challenge at, at GPW in ensuring that they keep their records in place. So I fully support uh, the recommendation that it should be taken to SCOPA. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, can I check if Honorable Khwase and Honorable Mokhale are on the line? Okay. Um, thanks, members, for, for your contributions. Uh, Mr. Adams, you will uh, take the, the issues that members have raised. Um, I have a few issues to deposit also. The, the minister has, on the immigration policy, if you recall uh, that there's an, an attitude towards reviewing the entire immigration uh, uh, policy that the, it has been proposed by the, by the minister. Uh, given the challenges that uh, we have been raising uh, over time. Um, and I think that it will be progress in terms of uh, um, responding to the challenges that uh, we are, are experiencing. We also ought to um, identify ourselves with the progress uh, that has now been 
demonstrated by the board of management authority um, you uh, Mozambique and and Petrich. It was as a result of uh, this chaos that was caused in this uh, uh, witness that uh, in the period uh, in uh, April during this Easter, this border management authority and also the um, deployment of the recruits, new recruits that seeks to assist us to make sure that uh, this border management come to uh, realization. So I think there's a great uh, progress to that extent. We also know that the BMA has reported that in 2023, in the end of financial year, they could have now consolidated their structure work um, and put all the budget votes into one stream of the BMA to be fully functional. Uh, and the memorandums have been also been considered by all the departments. There's uh, an appreciation of work that uh, one stop border post, which uh, has now been uh, uh, presented to to the committee, and the, this uh, progress uh, towards going out for for an uh, advert. You know that uh, in our last when was a present was presenting, uh, uh, there was a member. I can't recall whether it was Comrade, Liz, sorry, Honorable Lizelle or Honorable Pile, who raised the issue of regulations whether the treasury will then bring regulatory process so that it must not be a, a matter that we're sitting with now, like the etols in terms of the framework of fees and this and that. Um, so I think that progress in terms in line with the one border post on the two, in particular the Bed Bridge and the, uh, the uh, Mozambique one, is a matter that we must take appreciation of, of, of work and trace. <clears throat> the other issue is on the uh, uh, the voter education of the IEC, uh, which is a critical body uh, or area. And the IEC has indicated, presented to the committee that the stakeholders that have already entered into with them, uh, including the higher education uh, institution um, to advocate for this voter, uh, voter uh, education. So we must be uh, able to uh, reflect on that uh, progress, but the, we must also take responsibility as stakeholders uh, and political parties to assist in that front. Uh, uh, I know it's a matter that probably uh, is, is grounded in the IEC, but the electorate that those we need them to vote for parties or now that we are going to enter into a new phase of a new electoral participants system. We may need to uh, take that appreciation that we ought to assist the, the, the IEC uh, on this voter uh, education. They are, the mechanism in parliament, I've learned uh, units that assist uh, to uh, advocate for awareness in all uh, subject matters that are legislated. So part of the work that we must also contribute is this voter uh, education, but we must take appreciation of the uh, continuous work uh, um, of IC in terms of the voter education, but also weaknesses that we have identified as a committee of lack of a, a, a more a, efforts of the IC to reach out uh, our people. Uh, <clears throat> the issue of the mobile tracks, uh, this committee has 
uh, charge the department to move, uh, to respond or to get more uh, budget if it allows on this thing of mobile trucks. You will note that there's a, a indication from the department that they're going to receive more trucks in Ekebeha, if I can recollect my notes properly by the minister. Um, and this has a huge impact in terms of the um, uh, service uh, delivery. But in the main, some of these uh, uh, mobile trucks, the challenges of network. If you recall that uh, you can take a truck, then you find that there's no uh, network and you can't assist. So we must pu put more emphasis for department to make sure that the, the network capacity uh, in these mobiles, uh, which is linked to uh, the, the offices, are able to, uh, to assist uh, our, our people. <laughs> we must take more interest on what do we mean about these mo uh, modernized offices throughout the country. Let's identify its progress uh, um, and what it entails and how many uh, now that are established throughout the country. Uh, and I think one area members, we may need to also to take interest to, to visit, uh, just to see what is exactly this uh, modernized offices um, and what is the progress um, so that we identify practical in terms of the it input to services of our, our, our people. That is our major, major interest. We must also, this issue of the scope, I, I fully um, associate uh, the recommendations uh, given the reasons or observation we've made by the Auditor General and ourselves uh, in terms of referring, we must refer this matter to SCOPA with reasons that have been given by the Auditor General and the, uh, the task team that was appointed to deal and look on the overall governance and financial position of the, of the uh, uh, government printing work. So we've established foundation in terms of what do we mean when we say we refer uh, to, uh, to that. And we must talk to the recommendations that have been put forward in order to be implemented by the government printing works uh, uh, official. I think that putting the, uh, referring the matter to SCOPA uh, is for SCOPA to focus on more of the recommendation that are coming up on the, uh, that they've made and the more of the reasons that uh, 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 have been uh, raised by the order general. But also we take appreciation that now that the treasury and the AG and Home Affairs have now put in place what you call a war room to make sure that uh, uh, the issues that are raised by all the stakeholders, even the portfolio committee, are attended to the latter by the uh, government printing works. I must raise a matter that uh, we, we are going to end our term next year. And since we've started in office, this is the issue that has been closer to the committee. We've been interacting with it. We've assisted where we could. We've intervened greatly in terms of the issues that need to be attended to. Uh, and I think these areas of recommendation, task team, the AG and our work is a demonstration of our collective support to that institution. And our engagement to score, it will arise uh, from that point. Financial, stability, financial outcomes, audit outcomes of both the DHA and the IC um, uh, uh, and measures to sustain uh, and the findings that have been put uh, may need to be uh, dealt with by this uh, department. They have brought to the attention of the committee the turnaround plan. Um, but sometimes members, we do turnaround plan without timeframes. And which I think is important that uh, 
we, we, we have highlighted to them that we need time frame in terms of reporting uh, to, to the commit uh, to the commit. It does not mean that if um, in the, the committee, when is a schedule to deal with an item, we can bring another item for progress in terms of this institution that uh, both the turnaround plan of the Department of Home Affairs and the government printing works in terms of time frame scheduling for this committee to deal with progress uh, on the implementation of the issues that uh, we, we raised. We, we must make uh, uh, this uh, matter of uh, uh, cameras. Uh, uh, in one of the reports, if you recall members, Mr. Adams, you may need to go back to the report, to report post our oversight in Guaz Natal. Um, we visited an office there where no one could account on the state of the office, uh, uh, both in cameras and this and that. And there was a, a, a report to that effect that was brought before the committee in terms of the intervention the department has, has, is going to uh, interface with uh, and the budget allocation uh, to that uh, extent and the security issues in relation to the overall uh, work of the, the department. So there was that report and we managed to, to, to go back uh, to that. Briefly, those are some of the issues which uh, members you have uh, a, a interface with, uh, some of the work that uh, we've appreciated. The issue of the net, the responses of officials. Uh, it's a matter that we need to, to deal with. Uh, we have raised this matter over time. And I can recall, I, at some point, I used the, I made reference to an issue that relates to the immigration, DDG, acting DDG, Yusuf Simon. And I was deliberate because uh, I wanted to take that matter at high level that uh, and I recall there was a, 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 an issue that is doing a, a good work to respond. When we make reference to one part of the of, of, of officials, we are just demonstrating the difficulties of an ordinary person to reach out to that office. Uh, uh, if the yourself members of the committee, you can be responded to. What about an ordinary person who uh, is no go to the office to just receive, a, to, 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 to get services? She can be assisted by a, a, a official. Uh, there was a case in point, Honorable Pile went to the office uh, and the, the official just being arrogant. Uh, what is good is that he did not even introduce himself that is a member of parliament, uh, which we do normally don't do. So that the things that departments brief the committee were able to relate to them on the ground. So if members was, were, were raising these matters in this platform, offer response. Mr. Matunz, I think this is a matter that we need to, uh, uh, to deal with. Um, and I, I would want just to say in our first meeting next week, a uh, committee meeting, let's bring this item as a first point, uh, just to get a sense exactly what is it that the department uh, uh, are doing on this thing of no response to emails, no response, no, because the point is that we don't want them to do favor to people. Acknowledge, assist the person, uh, within the framework of the law, uh, that is important. Whether that person get assisted or re is rejected on his or her assistance, but the reasons why, where he must correct his problems, whether the issues. So that matter, we receive emails all, all, all every day uh, uh, on the issues of this day. today in case. Uh, I got an email which I've now referred to 
the DG. I mean, a citizen read, now it's directed to the president of the Republic and the minister on the basic matter. Uh, so we're left with no alternative, but to make sure that we must assist the department to, uh, to respond and the, and, the, and the officials on these challenges that are facing uh, uh, members. So uh, these are some of the issues that we, 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 we are, uh, are presenting, uh, uh, Mr. Salmon. Uh, if there are any other issue, members may come in, uh, but Mr. Salmon, can I get your impression on the issues that you covered? And if there's a follow-up on that, members will come in and then we will move to a second item. Uh, Mr. Salmon? Thank you, Chairperson. Um, yes, I've attempted to capture live what the members are saying. Um, and I've captured it here. Um, and there seems to be general consensus from the members. Um, and I've just tweaked some of the statements to include what you've mentioned, Chairperson, um, including um, some of the observations, uh, because the statements you made on the, the BMA and uh, the one sub border post were more um, observations or commendations than, than uh, recommendations. So we've captured that here too. No, no, sorry, um, sorry, sorry, Mr. Okay. Simon. Yes. Let me just interrupt you. Go to 6.2.8. Yes. 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 You see here, we're not saying the improve is coordination of responding to queries raised by members of parliament, more timers. Here we're saying they must respond to queries raised by members, I mean, community members because we're talking on their behalf here. We have expressed our view as members of parliament. We, mm. they must, queries that are being raised to the department, emails must be timelessly be, so if you put members of parliament uh, timelessly, uh, we're excluding other, any other citizen who may have a query with the department. So let's just write a general statement that we must, uh, uh, we must raise that admin. So, Sorry to interfere. I just want, I was reading through your notes, so I thought that it must be it's important to qualify that uh, what the committee means. Thank you. You can proceed. Thank you. Um, yes. So basically, I've captured, uh, attempted to capture all of the issues raised by the honourable members. Um, whether by slightly modifying, I can go through them all individually um, if you want, Chairperson, but there seem to be consensus. Um, what I'll do then is I'll just fix up the language um, and what we can do then with the members' uh, agreement is to adopt the report as amended and we'll fix it up and then send it to members, the, the fixed up version um, for to be debated. Okay. Members, is the matter we think we must. Okay. If there's no. Uh, Chairperson? Yes, Honor Mukhale? Uh, yeah. Uh, Chairperson, when you called my name, I was struggling with the microphone on this device. Okay. And so I did not, I uh, was not able to make my input as members, members of the committee were, were engaged in the report. I don't know if you can uh, allow me the opportunity to then make my uh, input. Yes, yes, proceed, Honor Mukhale, that's fair enough. Oh, okay. No, no, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate uh, that I can see that uh, some of the issues we raised on the IEC are captured uh, on the report. However, uh, it's just one or two things that I just want to put forward, uh, particularly on the IEC. I see the issue of the the 10 million unregistered voters is there and that the IEC needs to find a way of ensuring that they, they register uh, those people. I don't know, Chair, maybe if it would be appropriate or maybe it's the IEC that will deal with this, uh, that maybe they can establish an annual target of some sort that will then guide them in terms of uh, uh, how they go about uh, uh, getting those 10 million unregistered uh, voters. And also uh, around the issue of uh, 
the IEC staff uh, during uh, elections and by elections, uh, Chairman. Uh, I have noted uh, that, uh, you know, I'm not sure if they receive the same level of training or what, but uh, you go to one voting station, the presiding officer interprets the laws in a particular way. You go to another voting station, he gives a completely different interpretation. So if the IEC can maybe improve on the issue of the training of the staff, I think it will go a long way in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, uh, we have uh, free and fair elections and uh, raise the level of confidence uh, from ourselves as political parties and from the voters as well, because I personally have witnessed what I'm talking about where I go to a voting station and we are told that this is not allowed. And then I go to another voting station, then the presiding officer has absolutely no problem with that particular issue. You know, and also maybe to uh, also deal with the issue of, uh, you know, staff which can be seen to be uh, uh, lenient uh, to particular political parties even as they are in the employ of the IEC during an election or a by-election, because we have come across those issues and they are not nice, Jefferson, to, to have to encounter those issues, even in the previous uh, by-election so, uh, that was held in Komazi last week. So those are some of the issues that I think uh, maybe the IEC uh, should be able to, uh, to improve on and to, to deal with. And then lastly, Chairperson, I, I, I don't know, maybe going forward, uh, we should uh, uh, think about uh, maybe amending uh, the law around uh, 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 voting uh, to say that, uh, you know, once a South African citizen uh, turns 18 or maybe 16, then they should be automatically, you know, uh, captured onto the national uh, voters' role. You know, I don't know, uh, maybe it's, uh, it's just a proposal, uh, Chair. Uh, maybe something that uh, we should consider uh, going forward so that we don't have to deal with this issue of having to go out and get people to register. People should be automatically uh, registered. It should just be an issue of them going to update their home address and their other details. So those were uh, my inputs, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mokale, for your contributions. Uh, I think you are correct. Uh, uh, the, the training of staff, uh, or those that are temporary, to manage the affairs of the elections. I think in our last report of uh, 2021 local government elections when it was presented to the committee. I think members, we went to extend uh, on this uh, matter uh, and other issues that arise. Um, I think uh, Mr. Salmon, you can also just take on the recommendations the committee made uh, on the 2021 local government uh, observations uh, that must be, uh, must guide uh, towards the next local, sorry, the, the, the elections that are, are coming. We'll deal with the issue of the amendment uh, as being proposed uh, when we are interacting with the IC uh, when they uh, bring their uh, uh, amendments to the attention of the committee on other legislation. I think we can deposit that in that uh, discussions. Thanks, uh, uh, any member who, uh, we're struggling, could come in again. Um, yeah, I think we're fine, uh, members, in terms of the uh, uh, comments uh, and recommendations. Uh, we'll, well, then we'll invite yourself to uh, consider to adopt uh, the, the report and uh, we get second and then we move to second uh, item. Uh, can I invite members to
uh, move for the adoption of with the amendments made uh, of, on the on the on the report. On the rules. Chairperson, I move for the adoption with the amendments. There's a mover for adoption. Can I get a second? Chair. I will, will second. I will second the adoption with amendments. Thank you. At report adopted. Any contrary view? Chairperson, please note my, me. Thank you, Chairperson. We, we note the report together with the amendments that were made to the report. However, we'd like to reserve our vote. Okay. Uh, Chairperson? Uh, yeah, uh, we also note our, the, the, the report and uh, we'd like to reserve our vote. Thank you. Members, thank, I think uh, the... Um, Okay, Honorable Mudise. I'm fine, Chair. I, I was seconding the move to adopt the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you, members. We have now adopted the report, uh, amendment made, and uh, with the uh, note of a vote for other members recorded. And now we'll then uh, stand to reflect the deliberations of the, uh, the report on the three portfolios, the issues members raised, uh, weaknesses identified, progress made, the recommendations that uh, uh, we are uh, going to engage on. Honorable Mukhale, I see your hand. No, it's a legacy hand, Chair. I'll take it down. Oh, I thought you were throwing a your abstinence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, thanks. Uh, Mr. Matonsi, is there another matter on this report? Then we move to a second one. But no, Chairperson, there's no other matter on the report. Okay. Can okay. we move to the second report, second item? Uh, yes, Chairperson, this is uh, me again. Um, the members will have received the um, job descriptions of the commissioners that have been revised by the inter inter independent panel on the remuneration of public office bearers. The, uh, the letter from the house chairperson indicated that uh, feedback was needed from our committee on these four de job descriptions. Um, and um, so we've I've gone through them, um, and I'm sure the members will have looked at them too. But they 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 seem to be in line with the recommendations of the Constitution in Chapter Nine, the Electoral Commission Act, and the Public Financial Management Act. So everything uh, seems to be in order. The so what we've done um, uh, is we've drafted a, a short response from from the committee indicating that we received the correspondence from the house chair uh, um, in relation to this independent commission um, on, on draft uh, job profiles. And that the committee has, has uh, gone through them and uh, also seen that they're in line with the uh, respective uh, pieces of legislation. The issues that I have identified and the members can add to these if necessary is that the the four job descriptions are essentially all exactly the same for uh, the four commissioners so the question is where and how are the differences decided between the part-time the full-time commissioners the chairperson and the vice chair if their job descriptions are identical and secondly um the the two full-time commissioners um other than the chair and the vice chair since they also have uh, identical job descriptions uh, how will they in turn specifically have their um, their job descriptions uh, delineated to prevent unnecessary duplication? Thirdly, um, who decides how 
um, the time spent and waiting for each of the key performance areas uh, decided is decided uh, since uh, since it's left blank in the job descriptions received. Their members will have seen that there there's a, a, a column um, in the job description where it's left blank what the time spent and waiting for each of these key performance areas is. And so the uh, response is needed from this independent panel to um, either to the committee or to in considering, uh, in considering um, improving on its job descriptions to indicate the weighting that will be allocated and, and why that is left out uh, uh, in the job descriptions um, presented to the committee. So this is uh, what we've drafted. Um, I don't know if uh, the chairperson of the committee want me to go through the actual job descriptions uh, if the members haven't gone through them themselves. Okay, Mr. Salmon, uh, members uh, were requested to input on the um, uh, job descriptions uh, and we've circulated to your attention so that we're able to get time to reflect on that uh, and we'll take it back to uh, to the to the house chair um can i get a, a, a what is the time frame that we must return it back uh, mr Summer? Uh, the house chair just indicated with, as a matter of urgency. The the, the initial uh, letter was referred to us in, in June this year, so it's uh, a couple of months. And then the letter from the independent panel was referred to to, to Parliament itself in, and uh, earlier in the year. So there, it's, there are a couple of months overdue already, so I think there is some urgency. So when did you receive this letter? Uh, Eddie will have to uh, indicate. On the uh, Chairperson? Yes, Mr. Matthews. Yeah, the letter was sent in June, I think June 2nd, was the date June 2nd. Uh, it was towards when we were going on recess. Oh, it was sent when we were on recess, okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, members, can I get guidance whether we must go through the advert and contributions or whether members have taken a, a note on what is uh, requested from the committee. Uh, Honor Pile, Honor Ross, Honor Lohose, Honor Kanile, Honor Lizel, Honor Mkhalen, Honorable Modi Center. Chair, sure, I've, I've taken note of it, but I think uh, mine is still to differentiate similar to what um, Adam has raised on what is the differentiation between uh, the two. Uh, and perhaps I'm not, I'm not sure if there's anyone from the IEC present in the meeting that can perhaps um, advise us on that. Otherwise, I think the, the rest of it is, um, is, is the same. Thank you. Honorable Ross. Uh, sorry, Chairman, I'm unfortunately battling with connectivity and trying to change devices. So I, I didn't hear um, in, in the introduction here. So unfortunately, it's difficult for me to give input. Okay, so if, but have, did you receive the, the job descriptions and the communics sent by? Yes, yes. Okay, so what you're saying is that you have not managed to get into to the to the intake of this matter. Okay, Honorable Kanyele, I've read it. I'm just not sure what the committee has said because I'm I'm trying to um, get connectivity, so I'm not okay. sure what we are supposed to be saying now. Oh no 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. What, 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 okay, I'll call you later on. Let's just get others. Okay. Uh, yes, Honorable Kanyele. Thank you, Chairperson. I think we can take the job profiles as read because they were circulated to us. I believe that we have all looked at them. I'm not sure if it is now to, time to, to actually, I think I may even make my, my contribution. Yes. What um, um, Adam has observed is what I have also observed that the job profiles, they're exactly the same for the Chairperson, the Vice Chairperson, the part-time and the full-time commissioners. So I think in the response that has been drafted by Adam, I have been covered 
then we'll await the response for for IEC and then decide on a way forward because it 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 it, it um, we need to understand who does what and what are their areas of priority because when you look at all these documents all the job profiles they're exactly exactly the same thank you chairperson okay thank you honorable lizen yeah chairperson i'm covered by the honorable kanile thank you thank you honorable mukhale Uh, no, I'm fine, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Members have made submissions that uh, the, the job profiles are, are similar. Now, I am not sure that as a committee, are we expected to make inputs on those or are we then supposed to recommend to IEC to make differences or differentiate on the on the different roles and 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 uh, positions that the 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 profiles have been sent to us i think we need a proper understanding on what is it expected for us now that we've received these job profiles and we went through them and we realized that they are almost similar to are we supposed to make recommendations or expect the ic to come and present to us uh, the differences that might be there thank you Thank you, Mr. Salma or Mr. Matuza. Uh, yes, Chairperson, if I can just respond, um, maybe also just to uh, bring uh, Honorable Rose into the loop. Um, we just, uh, in, essentially the, the remuneration of uh, public office bearers was an independent commission set up the, to review all uh, chapter nine institution um, job descriptions and salaries. And they provided new job descriptions uh, in a report to Parliament, um, and the House Chair referred this report to our committee for consideration. Um, and the members and and the committee staff have gone through these job descriptions and found that they are uh, all identical, and that that they need there they need to be more clarity on how they differentiate the different roles. And so we've drafted a response um, indicating the the concerns uh, around these job descriptions so that this independent panel then can uh, take these concerns into consideration and re again re report back to parliament with their refined uh, job descriptions. So um, so for now, all we, the, having discussed this, um, we, the, the chairperson will then just sign this, uh, this letter and refer it back to the house chairperson who in turn will refer it to the uh, independent commission uh, on the remuneration of public office bearers for their con for their uh, consideration of our input. Okay, okay, noted. Another Ross. Uh, yes, chair. That sounds right. That sounds like an appropriate course of action. Okay. Um, I think. Sorry, just one one other thing before you go on is um I, I'm not sure how these these things work, but I think it might be for um, procedural matters uh, good to have because it's a report, although it's a letter. It's because it's a report that we have a mover and a seconder on the for our minutes uh, in case we uh, in case it's if required of us at some point. Okay, what what let's do like this, uh, uh, Mr. Salmon, members, which I would suggest so that we make it easy for. For, for members, let's not adopt it this today. Um, I, um, I will request that you, you, you firm up the, the areas uh, in the electoral commissions the roles of the commissioners, I think perhaps it's outlined there. And let's look on the, as uh, earlier on, or advice on the, um, uh, because when they are appointed, obviously were guided by the, uh, the constitution of the Republic so that it informs what the committee should uh, uh, firm up on what you have already identified as areas that must uh, inform the commissioner of a, uh, uh, the public commission. So we need to come back uh, to those issues. Um, and I'll request that 
let's get into the job this sorry the commissioners deputy commissioner and other commissions look on their job profile and then look on the constitution and the responsibilities that these uh, commissioners are assigned then come back to the committee and uh, uh, and then inform the uh, 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 the the committee so the committees once this letter has been sent to the chair at least we are probably informed on the uh, uh, issues that encompasses the job description description of the commissioners uh, of the of of the IC. I think that would be sufficient so that at least members we 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 don't adopt a matter that this discomfort in some of the uh, submissions that are, are raised. We would, we're trying to empower what you have already drafted uh, as a response to, uh, 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 to, the, to, to the House Chairperson. Would it be fair that we, 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 we then round up uh, to, con to consider this, uh, our submission in the next committee meeting? Mr. Samu? Uh, yes, Chairperson. Um, I attempted to capture the issue on the registration referred uh, in the, to the Constitution and the Electoral Commission Act and the, uh, the PFMA. The only thing is that the Electoral Commission Act has like something like 20 or 30 different provisions that relate to the, uh, to the commissioners. So I just refer to the Electoral Commission Act in general, as opposed to anything in specifically, because essentially the entire Commission Act refers to the roles of the commissioners. Um, so this is why we've captured it here, rather than going into every single clause and section of the Commission Act. Uh, yes, no, 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 no. I'm, I think we're at the same page. What I'm saying that... Yeah. Let's allow members to go back, go to those uh, issues which we have referred it to uh, in terms of the job system. So that when we adopt this, when we consider this, uh, our input as a committee with that reference, because the input that is requested is members uh, may need to uh, empower the process on where there can be changes, where there can be uh, additions, uh, that are in line with the, the the issues that are raised by the committee. So, if members can, we can allow them to uh, look on those issues which we have referred uh, the Electoral Commissions Act and the Constitution and other laws that are governing this process. Will then have a concise consideration of the report. I'm not sure, members, if I'm 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 I'm, I'm making sense so that we with a proper contributions to the uh, uh, to this matter. Will this summary assist us to consider this report in the next meeting? Honorable Ross? That is proper, Chair. Okay, Honorable Pile? Yes, Chair, I was saying no, that is proper. Okay. Can I check, Honorable Zell? Honorable uh, Mukhale? No, we are fine, Chair. Okay. Honorable Lise? That is in order, Chair. Thank you. Honorable Kanyele? Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, Chairperson, I had a problem with uh, unmuting the device. Uh, I'm covered. That is in order. Thank you very much. Okay. Honorable Lise? Okay. 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 Can I get a sense, Mr. Matons, Mr. Salmo? I think that will be assisting us to to deal with this item. Yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. I'll, I, well, I'll email the reports for members to to consider. Yes. Okay. No, thanks, members. Is there any other matter, Mr. Matons? No, Chair. There's no other matter, Chair. And our next session is when? Next week. Next week, yeah, Tuesday. Okay. Thanks, members, uh, for uh, the considering the report, BRRR report, and uh, we note that uh, we'll finalize this matter in our next uh, committee meeting for consideration, so that we're able to respond to the uh, to the House Chair. Thanks very much for your contributions, and the meeting stand adjourned. Thank you, Chairperson.
Chabonga, Chabonga members. Mr. Matonzi? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm calling you, ne? Okay. Yeah.